Hey everyone, it's me Derek again. I'm going to be making you a video today where I will be turning pennies into brass. Google searches, I found out that the ratio of copper to zinc in brass is typically 70 to 30. And then I looked up the penny composition and pennies before 1982, the composition was typically 95% copper to 5% zinc. And after that, the composition is 97.5% zinc to 2.5% copper. Next, and what I'm currently doing, is I'm weighing pennies just to figure out exactly how many grams of zinc and copper there are in the two different compositions. So here I am weighing a pre-1982 penny and it's roughly 48 grams. Throughout weighing multiple, I found out that that's about the average. Now I will weigh the newer pennies, which are mostly zinc. And there's high 38, 39. I'm just weighing a few to get a general idea to make an average. This is very rough. 38, 39. So I'll use the number 39 grams for my post-1982 pennies. I'll be back to you quickly after doing a couple calculations. I've now completed my calculations and it turned out to be some pretty simple math by using two copper cents to one zinc cent. That ratio works out to 93 grams copper for every 42 grams zinc. And the math on that leaves a 69 to 31 ratio, which is pretty close to the 70-30, which we were shooting for. Now, technically it's illegal to melt these pennies. So a legal way to go about this would just be to acquire some scrap copper and zinc and to work out the ratios with that. Using these little graphite molds that I've ordered off of eBay, that's what I will be pouring into and I'll be using the acetylene torch to melt inside of this crucible. Just a small clarification, I was accidentally saying gram instead of grain, but I was using grains to measure those pennies. All the calculations should still be the same though because we were really calculating ratios and not actual weights. First pour, I messed up a little bit and added add the zinc to the molten copper, which proved to be a failure. The zinc kind of exploded, it could have been quite dangerous. So this is what I ended up getting out after cleaning out the crucible. This piece right here looks kind of like brass, but the rest are all obviously mostly copper. So I'm gonna give it another try. I had a little trouble getting it all to melt. I was getting a lot of impurities floating up, but I was able to pour this. So now I'm gonna dump it out and cool it off. And and there she is, all polished up. Almost looks like gold. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I did have a lot of pieces of impurities that never fully mixed as well as some of the copper left over from my first try. This piece that came off my first try I'm pretty sure is in fact brass. Just much smaller than this ingot. The ingot weighs in around 28 and a half grams. Uh, I would say a similar sized piece of silver would weigh about twice that so it's not necessarily as dense as some denser metals but there it is use some punches just to label it and the final product one disclaimer I'd like to leave you with, if you were paying close attention while I was melting the metals, 
You may have seen a dark smoke coming off of it, and that's actually zinc oxide, which can be toxic if you breathe it. It causes metal fume fever. So if you are to try this, make sure to be extremely careful, hold your breath, get a respirator, do it in a well-ventilated area. As you can see, I have the doors to our shop open in the background there. Other than that, I just want to thank you. In the near video, I'll also try to make a video where I make bronze, which is copper and tin rather than copper and zinc. I've also made aluminum bronze in the past, which is copper and aluminum. So stay tuned and check back in and I'll try to upload more content. Thank you. To conclude the video, I'll show you this little coin I made. I polished this up from one of my scrap pieces from last night. Looking pretty sharp. I just used some silver polish and rag. Rounded it off into a circle using the grinder. And I think that looks pretty cool.